Hello everyone, welcome to FJX 2000 Productions and another episode of Let's FJ. My name is Hayden and today we're working on my Toyota FJ Cruiser where we will be adding blind spot rear view mirrors. These are from Suma Performance. They were awesome enough to send me these mirrors. And these mirrors are convex, so they eliminate blind spots. They have a blue tint to them, so that way you're not getting glare from cars behind you. And they have rear turn signals. Uh, and they're heated, so there's like so much going for these mirrors. They're gonna be so awesome to have on the FJ because everyone knows factory mirrors on the FJ are kind of a joke. So we're gonna install these and we're gonna see how they are. It'll be a bit of a process to get them installed, but I'm hopefully gonna show you exactly how to do it. So first things first, let's do a little bit of an unboxing of this Suma Performance rear view mirrors for the FJ Cruiser. Uh, sure enough, they included a couple stickers in there from their company, so that way we could rock those if we wanted. Uh, what else do they have? We have the actual mirror itself. You can see there's a left one, a right one. They included some packages with the wiring in there, and they also have a couple of these electrical connectors in case we want to splice in our wiring. But the mirrors themselves, as you can see, they kind of have that blue tint to them. So that way they aren't going to glare from the cars behind us. Let's get this out real quick. The actual mirror itself. Hello there, everyone. <laughs> but we have the mirror. You're probably going to see a lot of reflections of me. On the back side, those top two connectors you see, those are for the defroster. And then these two wires you see right here, you can see our little arrow, that's for the integrated turn signal. So this mirror will have a turn signal just right here in this bottom corner that will light up when we wire it up with our turn signal. And we are going to hook it up so that way our window defrosters come on when you press the defroster button for your rear window. So that way it's super stock, super factory, no dirty switch that we're adding somewhere. It'll just be really clean, really clean install. That's what I love to have. So you can see all my patches on the ceiling. <laughs> but uh, anyways, let's go ahead and see how to remove our factory mirrors. Right now you can see I have the OEM mirrors. Uh, I added just a little blind spot mirror right here because that makes life a lot easier to see and that's what I've been using for years. Definitely recommend at least getting this if you don't get anything else. But we're going to remove this and ultimately the new mirrors, those, they'll install right in this one's place. First things first, we're going to remove this mirror. What I find is best is to push it up at the top so that way the bottom is kind of tilted out. And then some people recommend taking a flathead screwdriver, slipping it just up underneath the edge so it kind of disengages the back. Ooh, and look at that, it just popped off. <laughs> you can see mine has been off a few times because some of our factory clips are missing or broken. Who knows how this thing is holding in? It's only holding in with uh, a few of the clips. Half of them are missing. But uh, and just another reason to replace this. But this is our factory mirror. It came right out. Some people have a lot more trouble with it. Some people accidentally break the glass while they're removing it. So just be careful that you don't do that. But now that we have that out, uh, the next process is to take this plastic covering off. To remove this black plastic cover, we just need to undo three screws, Phillips head screws. One right there, one down there, and one right here. Let me unscrew those real quick. So at this point, we're kind of in uncharted territory. There's a little plastic clip here that you have to squeeze, so that way you can pull out this bottom corner. You can see we got the bottom corner loose. The rest of it, there must be hidden clips in the plastic that are kind of holding it because it doesn't want to come out. So I'm just going to try and carefully work this plastic frame so that way we can get this whole section off. All right, we got this off. There's a little clip at the top, you can see right there. Uh, that top left corner was just kind of holding it in place. Once we got that loose, the whole thing just came right out. Easy peasy. So now that gives us access down here to this wiring because we're going to be running our wiring for our turn signal and heating down through this same hole and into the car. So now we have to open up the, the car and we're going to be taking apart a lot of the plastic in here. We have to take off the door panel and to access the wiring for the defroster, we're gonna access the wire down in this neck of the woods, right by the floor, uh, the door seal. So let's go ahead and start removing some plastic. So first to remove the door, 
we have to undo the clip that's right here. It's a little push pin and then it all comes out. There's a screw hidden right behind this flap and then there's the screw hidden right behind the door handle right there. I've loosened all of those. So now it's just a matter of finding an edge. It's hard to film and do this at the same time, <laughs> but finding an edge where you can grab the door and, uh, and then separate it. Might have to do some stuff off camera. There we go. Found a ledge. Now it's just all popping out along the door. Uh, and then next thing you know, you can lift it up. Kind of lifts up and off the top door sill. And now our door is loose. And it's just a matter of disconnecting some of these cables. So that way we can free the, the door as well as unplugging some plugs. And just like that, our door is liberated. I just undid these two cables that go right to the door mechanism, door handle mechanism. And then there's just one plug, this plug right here, this gray one, that goes to our door control switch. Easy plug to undo. And now we have the door out of the way. Next thing we need to do is undo this panel. This gives us access to the bolts holding our rear view mirror in. We got this panel off, super, super easy. Just the four screws or bolts, however you want to undo them. And now we have access inside the door. You can see our three bolts, those hold the mirror in and this is the wiring for the light in the mirror as well as the mirror motor controls uh, when you're wanting to control your mirror. So uh, I just have to undo this plug and undo these th three bolts and then our mirror will be removed. Just like that, our three bolts are out. Just uses a 10 millimeter nut, classic, don't lose that. I undid our plug and with that, our mirror should be, uh, actually I'm not sure what's holding it in right now. Oh, I think there's just like a little plastic clip kind of holding it. There's not too much holding it on though. <laughs> Went ahead and undid those three bolts, undid our plug. Your window will need to be rolled up to do this, but now we have our mirror. It just came right out. The little plastic edges, the clear plastic, right? It's hard to point and hold this at the same time. Right here, this plastic and right there, those kind of hold it in place even after you've undone everything. So it doesn't just completely fall out. It does have a little bit of weight to it. So just be careful. There's the metal frame in there. So now that we have this off, we can now run our wiring. So to be able to run the wire up into the mirror, down through that little hole in the bottom, we need to remove this rubber grommet. You can see I've started separating it, but the only way to get it completely off is to undo that little Phillips head screw at the bottom of the plug. So I'm gonna undo that and then I can remove this grommet all the way, this rubber gasket, I mean. Just like that, after loosening that screw, you can see this whole assembly or the whole rubber grommet uh, and the plug all is loose. And now we can see where we need to run our wiring for the lights and for the heater. So after some clever wire routing, we figured it all out. I first removed this sticky black factory electrical tape that was on this side of the rubber gasket. So that way I could snake my wires up through here. I then routed my wires through the post up out the hole right here. The first wires that you see come provided with the mirror kit from Suma. These connect to your turn signal. And I left them right at the bottom because that's right where our wires connect is at the bottom for the turn signal. The other wire, this one, I can't remember what gauge this wire is. I'll put it on the screen right now. But this I also routed up. It goes through the column, up and out the hole. You can see it snakes out right behind everything. And I actually put it behind the whole mechanism so it comes out and sits at the top. I'll have to add some flat connectors onto this so that way I can connect them onto our terminals for the heating element, but that is in the right place up there at the top. And it's out of the way of our motor control module and everything should work out really nicely. So at this point, I just need to rewrap this with some electrical tape and then start putting this back together and figuring out how to wire, route our wires through the door. We don't want to run it straight through here because you can see this is where our window goes up and down. 
So we'll have to route it around just like the factory wires go. So that way it doesn't get caught in our window. I went ahead and threaded our wires through the door. I then clipped this back in place and it would hold just for a little bit. Then I went ahead and put in finger tight the, the bolts that hold in the mirror and replugged it in. So you can see our wires now come out around the window track and out through this panel in the door. I will probably ultimately zip tie these so that way they're nice and bundled up with the rest of the wires and not gonna be flopping around. And then I can put this panel back on and we can work on routing these wires into the actual FJ through our little uh, tube right here. I went ahead and buttoned this up. I zip tied on the inside and then rebolted this panel back in place, added a zip tie right there. Now we're just about to start removing plastic. Uh, some of these parts are pretty easy. Like right here, the floor panel piece, you just grip it under kind of like this front edge if you can. And then you give it a nice pull. There we go. And then it just starts clipping, like unclipping I should say, down the length of it. Sorry, my car is so dirty. I haven't detailed it in a while. And now we have access to those wires. That's where we'll be splicing in. And then we have to pop off our uh, dead pedal, which again, just takes grabbing it under the edge and then clipping it. Then we have this little unscrew thing. It's just plastic and there's no attachment. You just have to do it by finger. You undo that, that's out of the way. And now this panel can come out as well. It just kind of unclips, has some clips right here, right here, and just kind of slides out. And now we have all of that out of the way and we have access to our wiring and we just need to be able to get our wiring through here. So there are two bolts right where this little diaphragm is. There's two bolts that hold this plastic part in place. So I undid those so that way we can loosen this. You can see I've run one wire through before. So this is just where we're gonna be running our wires as well. I'm thinking of stringing something through from the inside through this little tube and then out right here where I can attach it to our wires and then I can snake those back through into the cabin. With those bolts out and with disconnecting our weather stripping just a little bit, I was then able to stick this extra long zip tie through the hole and once I could feel it out this end, I just electrical taped the wires on and then pulled them through. So now we have our wires into the engine bay and now I can just button this up by getting some zip ties on there. And ultimately we can throw the door panel back on. And then it's just a matter of doing the electrical work for our lights and for our heating element for the defroster. Went ahead and buttoned up the door threw everything back on, put our bolts back in on our little grommet area, uh, whatever this is called, this boot. Our wire is now ready to go. And I actually even added the connectors over here for our heating element, for the defroster. So that is pretty much ready to be plug and played with our mirror. So let's go ahead and do that really quick while we're looking at it. All right, before you put on your mirror, make sure you put on your black frame, the three bolts or the three screws that hold it in. Make sure you do that. We have our wiring routed. Uh, make sure you leave enough slack of both of these wires when you put it all together so that way you have some room to maneuver. I wish I would have left my turn signal lights a little longer because I barely have enough room as it is. I have plenty of my, my defroster wires, but I just wish I would have done the same for those. Um, Right now, I am just about to clip this back into place. Uh, I was just gonna show when you put it in, in case you didn't see how to do so, the top of the mirror has these little hooks and you just kind of hook those uh, onto the corresponding spot right here. So they go up and underneath these two little bars. And once those are hooked in at the top, then you can kind of press the mirror on all sides and it'll clip in and engage the clips right there, 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 there. There's six clips all around that end up engaging. The top, it's just kind of hooked in on those little top spots. So I'll go ahead and 
plug this in and clip it in and we'll see how it looks. So I went ahead, pressed it in, was careful when I was applying pressure this way so that way all the clips would engage. I think it's worked and now we have a view of our mirror. Hello. It's supposed to be really convex so that way we get a nice wide point of view and it'll just be interesting to see what it looks like once we're actually in the car and driving. You can see that blue tint there so that way we're not getting the glare from cars behind. That'll be kind of cool to, to see what that looks like at nighttime. And now it's just ready to be wired up. It's all good to go. So after disassembling our little floor panel right here, right where the door sill is, I went ahead and kind of started disconnecting some of the electrical tape. So that way we could get access to our wires. And amongst the wire bundle is this wire right here. It's yellow wire with a green stripe. This, from what I've seen online and from videos posted by other channels where they're installing similar mirrors with heating elements, this is the wire that goes back to our rear defroster. Uh, it's essentially the positive. And so we will be connecting the red wire from our defroster into that. We're gonna splice it in. And you'll do this for both sides. So ultimately, everything that we've done on the driver's side, you're just gonna repeat for the passenger side. And then ultimately you run that wire through the dash behind whatever down to here. And then you'll also connect it in the same place on the same wire. From what I've read online, these heating elements only draw about one to two amps of power. And the fuse that's powering it under here in our dash panel is about a 30 amp fuse. And the rear window defroster, oh, the door's open, but our rear window defroster, it doesn't use nearly 30 amps. So to add the extra draw of defrosters on both mirrors really is well within the wheelhouse of the factory fuse that's in there and everything. So that's why most people feel perfectly fine going ahead and wiring in these mirrors. So we're gonna go ahead and maybe just leave this until we connect, until I can run the wires and everything for the other one, and then we'll do it all at once. All right, it's been a couple days since we did the other side. Now I'm going to do the passenger side mirror and get that all wired up and, and situated. Uh, so that way we can just do all the wiring at the same time. So now let's swap out that mirror. So I'm deep into the install of the wiring on this mirror on the passenger side. And you can see I did all the same stuff, running the wiring through the gaskets and everything down along through the door, little tube out through the floorboard. I tried this time to start my spool of wire over there and run it this way and up and through. And I will say that is definitely the harder way to do it. I recommend cutting your wire, starting with the mirror, and then stringing the wire all the way down and through to the driver's side. That is certainly the easier way to do it. But you can see we have our wires all coming out here for our heater, for our turn signal. I made sure to give myself a little extra length this time. And I think it works great if you run these wires out through this hole right here, kind of near where the clip will go in, but just up through this hole. But now I just need to bolt everything back up and start buttoning things up, tighten my zip ties, and then we will be almost ready to wire this thing up. So here I'm just showing how when you put the cover over your mirror, make sure you run your wires through it, just like so. And then you can clip this into place. Um, having this wire, the heater wires come through that hole, like I said, right by this clip down here, makes life a lot easier uh, for running the wires. This can kind of just come up anywhere here. There's a lot of room, but then we just uh, will press this in and clip it into place and then put in those screws again. And then we can attach our mirror. Just before plugging in the mirror, I will warn of one thing that I found out on the other side. The indicator plugs, these little ones right here for our turn signal, those are, those have like a little latch on them. So once you plug them in, they are not coming unplugged. And make sure you match up the wires correctly. You can see the wire here on the back. There's one with a white stripe and one without. And just with our wiring right here, we also have one with a white stripe and one without. 
So make sure you match up those wires correctly and then you should be good to go. But just make sure you only plug it in once you're officially ready to install this mirror. Otherwise, it'll just have to kind of dangle while you're figuring out the rest of your wiring. And just like that, we now have this mirror and the other mirror installed. I was driving around to get to this parking lot where I was doing the install just uh, with this one installed and already the difference is pretty awesome. It's cool having that convex mirror so that way you can see into the blind spot. And I haven't driven at nighttime to test out that blue tint and how it does with the glare, but now I'm just really excited to get this wired up and see the turn signal as well as the fogger or the defroster and see how that works. All right, here we are, third and final day working on the FJ. Today we are gonna finish up the wiring for this thing. And to do that, first I need to figure out where the turn signal little module relay is or whatever it is. Uh, I, I figured out where it is, let me show you on camera. So here we are looking at the floorboard on the driver's side. We're gonna be going up and under. So ignore this bundle of wiring, that's for something else. So just up and above, you kind of see this blue little box area. You can kind of see up, there's another blue box up there. So on 2007 models of FJs, the relay is just to the right of that thing. And it's in a way more convenient location than it is for me. So for me, we have to go up and under. And let me see if I can capture this on camera. So here we are looking at the driver's seat, looking out, we're gonna go up and under and if we look up underneath the driver's side uh, right by the steering wheel this is where the box is it's kind of up and underneath and locked onto this tray so I just have to disconnect it from there or unplug it so that way I can get access to the wires in question so it's super cramped under here so I'm just showing you that right there is the relay box and you have to unplug that to get to those wires otherwise they're very hard to get to and then you, i kind of pulled it out to the side of that box just off to the left so that way i then had access to my plug and the wires i also unplugged some of the other white plugs that plug into the side of that uh, relay module you can see i unplugged there's three of them there and after unplugging all those, it kind of allows me to pull this bundle of wires down just so now, whoop. so that way now I have my plug pulled down where I can see the wires and access the wires fairly easily. This plug has a bunch of different wire colors, but the two that we're concerned with are the two on this end. You'll see one is a blue wire with a white stripe and one is a pink wire. The blue wire with the white stripe, that goes to our driver's side turn signal. So that's what we're gonna tap into for our left turn indicator. And the pink one right next to it, that is our passenger side turn signal. So we're gonna tap into that one for the passenger side. So for example, here we have our wires coming from our turn signal in the left mirror. The wire with the white stripe, because they're both black, so the black wire with the white stripe, that is the negative. So that just needs to be grounded out somewhere. But the black wire is our positive. And in this case, since this is for the driver's side, we would grab our little bundle of wires and we're going to tap it into this blue wire. And for the passenger side, same thing, but just into the pink wire. All right, so coming from that flasher relay, I have now tapped our blue and pink wires. I think I was pointing to the wrong wire earlier. Now we have it. So that pink wire is going to our positive wire from our passenger side mirror. And the blue wire tap is going to the positive wire on our driver side turn signal mirror. I am using these fancy wire taps that are kind of, I guess, the big thing right now. They're from Posi Products. I'm using these 20 to 22 gauge ones. They are super nice, super perfect for these size wires. So I definitely recommend them. I mean, I will if it all works. <laughs> but now it's just a matter of grounding out our negative wires, the black wire with the white stripe. I'll just ground this out somewhere over here where I have a nice ground, one ground that I've used in the past. 
is that bolt right there, right above our uh, brake pedal. So I might just tap it right into that guy. And I actually already did it on the passenger side. And I used this bolt right here uh, where the plastic trim clips in and where some of the wiring is also kind of held in place. There's just a nice screw there that goes right down to the metal. And I just tapped, or I not tapped, but I'm running a ground from the passenger side right there. So we are almost good to test our turn signals. So one of the last things that we need to hook up now that we've finished the mirrors is I have the positives from both of our defrosters on the mirrors running to this posi tap. And now I'm gonna tap this into our wire loom down here. This wire right here, the yellow wire with the green stripe, that is the defrost wire that then goes back to our rear window. We will just tap into that and then we need to ground the negatives. It again has two negative wires from both sides. One over here, one over there. We'll tap those and ground, or we'll, we'll wire those up so they're grounded out. And then in theory, when I press the defrost button on our dashboard, it should go ahead and turn on the defrosters on the mirrors. Let's finish this up and then we'll check it all out. So there we have it. We have our wires tapped in. I used a different size of posi tap for this connection. I ended up using this size. You can see it right there, 18 gauge, but these are actually a little too small. I wish I would have used a, a slightly larger size, but it works and it'll fit right here. The plastic will clip over it, so it shouldn't be affected at all. The wires run up. I have plugged everything back in. We have everything grounded. So now it's time for the final test. All right, I was just chasing some electrical issues. Uh, it seems that I mixed up my wires. So uh, I would just put everything back up, but the wires coming from your turn signals, the one with the white wire is your positive. The one that's just solid black is your negative. So I've grounded out the solid black one on both sides and I have my black wire with the white stripe going to my, my little taps. So again, on the driver's side, the black wire with the white stripe, that will go to the blue wire with the white stripe. While on the passenger side, that black wire with the white stripe will go to the pink wire. And now I have it all plugged back in. We can sit in the FJ. We'll turn on our turn signals. And just like that, they work on both sides. And of course it's the middle of the day, so they're not gonna be super bright but I'm just super excited that they work at all. So again, here we have our Suma performance mirror. We'll turn on our turn signal. And just for comparison, here is our factory mirror, which when it was in that place, you can see how narrow of a field of view we can see versus this mirror, so much more that is now visible with it. And the turn signal looks beautiful in there, integrated into our mirror. And same thing on the passenger side, just a nice wide field of view. We can see a lot. It has that tint on there. So hopefully at nighttime I can test it with the glare and it's just awesome to see that that works. When I press our defrost button, we are not getting any fires or anything. Nothing has uh, burnt up and our wiring down here isn't getting hot, uh, which is a good thing. And because it is like springtime and it's warm, of course it's hard to test the defrost feature right now. I mean, it's just, it feels like it's warm just because of ambient temperature, not really because of the me pressing the defroster button. So I'm just assuming that it works, but I really don't know for certain. Uh, I do have a digital thermometer that I could put on there to see if the temperature increases. But other than that, it's just kind of seeing when it gets rainy or snowy outside, cold, what it does. Here's just a little video of driving down the road. And those rear view mirrors are looking great. Nice wide view on both of them. Really enjoying the look. We'll get a test here in just a little bit to see what they look like at nighttime. All right, here we are in the parking lot where this whole install started. And at nighttime, look at that. Look at how beautiful 
our turn signals look. It looks great. Oh man, these turned out so good. It's so clean. And as I was watching videos of other people who have done this install, they are all doing it on cars that usually have some sort of blinker already in the mirrors. So to add it to a car that didn't have it already, that's a pretty big deal. Same thing with the defroster. The FJ didn't have the defroster before, but now I do. And that's, a, that's definitely not a common thing for people to have on an FJ. So just a really cool mod. I really like the look of it. I was just driving down the road and the anti-glare is looking really nice. Love the nice wide field of view with these things. Super cool mod. Thank you Suma Performance for, for sending these. Super glad to have them. And if you want to check them out, go ahead and check out their website. All right, final test on our new mirrors. I'm going to test the defroster. I have my digital thermometer here. We can test right now, just ambient temperature. The mirror is anywhere from like 45 to about 53 degrees. So let me go ahead and we will turn on our defroster. And now I will just wait and see if this thing warms up and I will give you a update in a few minutes. All right, it's only been a couple of minutes and let's test to see where we're at. So already our mirror, holy cow, it's measuring in the like 80, 90, almost 100 degree range. Yeah, and I can feel the warmth coming off of this thing. And just like as reference, just outside the temperature is really cool right now. Like it's only 50 degrees according to the FJ's thermometer. And so the fact that we're heated up to the point, like this would totally defrost so quickly. So with that, I guess it's a success. We can test the other side too. Let's check it out. We have our thermometer. Let's measure it. Yep, like 80, 90, 95 degrees over there too. So I would say our new mirrors are a complete success and install has gone perfectly. Well, it's been a crazy couple of days. Glad that we finished up that install. Everything is looking great. And I'm excited to just be able to use these new mirrors on a day-to-day -day basis. It will be great. Uh, check out Suma Performance if you want to pick up these mirrors. And you can pick them up in all different varieties. Just with the wide angle, you can get it with just the tint. You can get it with just the turn signal. Or you can get it with the uh with the defroster there's all sorts of combos that they offer so you can go all out and get everything like i did or you can get just one or two of the features if that's what you're into use the code put on the screen right now fj for five percent off of your order i checked last on fj cruiser forums and that's what they said is a great deal that you can use to get just a little bit off of your new mirrors so check them out if you want to thank you for watching hopefully this video has helped you i'll leave comments down below if there's any updates or anything and with that keep on fjing have fun take care and we'll catch you next time